Good morning, everyone, and happy Saturday. My name is Callie, and this is another weekend of Clarinets, Cats, and Coffee. All right, so for the next couple of weeks, um, I am going to feature the Saint Sans Sonata. And we're gonna mainly just stick with the first movement of the sonata. It's a really, um, it's a popular uh, piece for many students in my studio to learn as uh, one of the first like bigger pieces that they uh, that they learn of you know out of clarinet repertoire and so it's something that I dearly love and that I work on with students every year and um, funny funny thing I actually never really performed it until I was in grad school and I decided like, hey, I'm probably gonna teach this a lot, so I should probably learn it and actually, you know, perform it at least once. And so um, based on that experience and my experience preparing um, the recordings that I'm, I've am i shared with you um, uh, over these videos, um, I am just gonna share a few tips. And so these videos are gonna be sectioned off into three different groups. So the first, third of the first movement is kind of the opening and so today we are going to focus on that. The next video will focus on the middle section and the last video in the series will focus on the very end. Now before we do that I want to say thank you to all of my patrons. Your support means a lot to me. If any of you are interested in supporting my channel just want to say thanks. Uh, there's a link below you can become a patron for as little as three dollars a month and um, any contribution is much appreciated so thank you. And on top of that if any of you are interested in taking lessons over the summer just visit my website fill out the inquiry form and let me know kind of what you're up to what you're working on and what you're looking for and we'll work something out so I have heard from a few of you guys already and which is super cool um, so be sure to reach out and we'll set something up all right so the first thing I want to talk about in this first opening section and actually for the whole piece is something a lot of you are gonna be like Callie I know how to count this um, and that's the time signature okay it's in 12-8 time and the main thing that I want you guys to keep in mind is that every single eighth note and every single measure needs to be accounted for and this is a sonata for clarinet and piano meaning it's a duet between the clarinet and the piano part so if you don't have a consistent eighth note subdivision going through your head it means that you're gonna be skipping over some important piano passages as well. So, um, you know, part of that is just being able to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, right? Um, the other part of that is actually doing some score study. So you sit down with the piano score and you follow along your part and you follow along the piano part, listen to a recording and make little notes here and there of things that um, you might wanna look out for or things you wanna listen for or um, little cues to pick up on here and there. And so the opening measure is very, very confusing for many people because the piano only has two notes, but it pulses in groups of three one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, right? So if you are not completely aware of the subdivision throughout the measure, you're gonna come in early, you're gonna come in late, you're gonna sound like you don't know what you're doing. So um, one thing I like about the Tom Play app is that you can just sit there and repeat it over and over and over. You can play along with the clarinet recording, you can turn the clarinet recording off, you can have a metronome on, and um, that can that can really help kind of solidify the internal pulse. Now the next thing that I would like to mention here is that the opening sequence here, dee da dee dum, dee da dee, right? Um, it's all piano, but you want to create motion and movement. You don't want it to sound ba da da da. This is boring. I'm just waiting for the hard stuff to get here, you know, and that it's going to sound boring and it's going to be boring to everybody and you're going to you're going to hate life, right? So, create a passage, a phrase, a conversation between all of these micro phrases and let it blossom throughout the entire length of the first two lines. This is your opening and you want to establish a beautiful sound, you want to establish your musicality to your listeners and you want to get them interested in whatever it is you have to say. 
the next thing that I suggest is practice perfecting each phrase. Um, I think a lot of us will just do one little chunk, another little chunk, another little chunk, and then we don't really like put it all together to create phrases. And um, I, I find that if I, if I practice one phrase at a time and I try to get each phrase to sound perfect, feel perfect, be expressive and all of that stuff, then when I actually go to play big chunks of this together or perform the whole thing or rehearse it, it flows so much easier. It's, it's, it's similar to, um, you know, making sure that your commas are in the right place or your periods are in the right place when writing a story or giving a lecture or speaking to someone. So the, the phrases, working phrase by phrase, breath mark to breath mark, can really help solidify the musical ideas in your music. Okay, and then the last thing about this opening section here, um, just to get you guys kind of started, is actually in, I don't have measure numbers, but in my part, it's four lines down. And it, it's this passage that starts on a low D and it diminuendos up to a high D. And the tricky part about that is you have to create the illusion of a diminuendo, but if you don't actually start your diminuendo loud enough, you're not gonna have anywhere to go and you're gonna lose your sound up in the higher register. So this is my trick. In the measure before, when you have the dotted quarter notes, do a gradual crescendo through the measure and then really lay into the accent, not hard, but give it a big expressive burst of wind. And then as you come away from that low D, just let the volume relax naturally so the sound just floats up to that high D. So all of these uh, musical and expressive nuances, the, the crescendos and decrescendos and everything, it's all about the creating the illusion of intensity or, or, uh, or getting softer or getting further away. So um, as you guys work through this, I want you to think about those things, creating bigger contrast with your dynamics to help create the illusion of, of certain dynamic uh, characteristics. Um, I want you to also think about actually having an eighth note pulse going inside your body, inside your brain all the time whenever you're playing this. And then the final thing is to think about your music in terms of phrases rather than just little standalone chunks. That's just going to help connect everything so much better in your head. All right, guys, that is it for today. Next week, I'm going to give you guys some tips on tackling that really tricky middle section. Um, so start working on it now, and I will see you all next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a good rest of your week. And as always, happy practicing.